Alright, this is Firemind here and today I am going to show you how you can make your enemy punch you or at least try to punch you. So as you can see here, this enemy is following me around and is trying to punch me and when he punches me, I actually respawn. Now you can of course add damage or just restart the level when you get hit, that's totally up to you, you will be able to adjust that as you like. And you will also be able to use just stuff from the standard assets, so there's no paid assets or whatsoever here. And yeah, let's dive right into it. Okay, so we start off with our enemy running towards us and us being able to like shoot him and stuff. That's not really important for this tutorial. What we want to do today is we want to get this guy to punch us when he comes close enough. So let's get to it. Now the first thing I want to do is add the animation to this kind of robot enemy that I have here. So therefore I'm going to click on that robot enemy. So in I have this one as a prefab because I'm spawning it. You might already have it in your scene that depends on your game. And in my case my prefab is called robot enemy. Now when I double click that, I can edit the prefab here. I click here and you see here, uh, I just use the standard assets AI third person character. So you have all these standard things on here, which you usually have. Now what I want to do is I want to add a new state here. So I want to use a attack state. So let's create a new empty state. Go ahead and call that attack and then assign it a attack animation. So you can choose whatever attack animation you want here. I'm gonna go for a punch. I think I got this from some free animation packet from the asset store, I think some mechanum animation pack. Now I'm gonna go in here and select punch. Whoops. Now I think this one is just fine. And then I'm gonna set a transition from grounded to attack and from attack back to grounded. Then I also want to add a parameter which I already have here which is called attack. So you can add this by going here clicking trigger and then renaming that to attack. You're gonna use that later to actually trigger this transition. So let's set this parameter as a condition for this transition to happen. So in here you click on the transition and go to conditions and in here you want to click on a plus sign and then choose the attack trigger. Now for this transition you don't need a condition because you always, when he finishes his, his attack, you want to just go back. Now check out the transition so it's actually looking good. So in my case that's just fine. So yeah, he transitions into that kind of attacking motion. Now to trigger this, we want this to be triggered whenever our enemy is coming pretty close to uh, the player. Luckily in the AI default from the standard assets on the script that we have here, which is called AI character controller script, we have, if we edit that script, we have this update function here which checks if there's a target and goes to that target pretty much. So what we want to do is we want to get the remaining distance. So let's see what the remaining distance is. So we can just go agent remaining distance and we get a float value of how far the enemy is still from the player. So if that's below I'd say 1.5 I want to be able to trigger that um, the animation. So I'm just gonna go get component and then animator and then set trigger and then the one that you just created. In my case, that's attack. And there you have it. That's already enough for you to, for your enemy to come at you and trying to hit you in the head. So let's try that real quick. You can see he's playing it on awake as well. And now you can also see that he's trying to punch you when he gets too close because he didn't have his morning coffee yet and that's why he's kind of pissed. Now, 
we also want to be able to like trigger a damage function or trigger a die function whenever that guy hits you. Therefore, we're going to use some, some more stuff. So what we want to do is we're going to come down to the to your prefab and then you want to go into the skeleton, go to wherever the portion of your enemy's body is that you are will be colliding with. In my case, that's the fist and find the fist in your skeleton. So that's shoulder, upper right, lower arm, and that right hand. Now this right hand looks just fine and I wanna add a collider on this. So set that to zero to center it and then make this maybe like, in my case, one six. So basically this collider is used to detect if the enemy is actually hitting the player. So whenever the player collides with this little sphere here, there is going to be a damage or die function be, that's going to be triggered. Now you also want to set, set this to trigger, so you don't actually want to interact with it uh, or on a physical level. You just want to notice when that hand hits your player. Then go back to your animator. So you want to check the animation that you actually choose, chose here. And you want to find that in your project here. So in my case, that's this one. Now, I want to add some animation events to this. However, if I'm going over here, I have this read only because I cannot edit this punch. So the animation events will be used to activate the collider whenever the enemy swings at you. But for that, we need to be able to actually edit this animation. So Let's go to project and let's duplicate this by pressing CMD D or control D on a PC. And then you end up with a second one. I want to rename that one called to robot punch. And then on the attack, I actually want to assign the robot punch instead of the normal punch. All right, now I have that. And when I click the robot punch, I wanna go back to animation and you can see the read only will be gone. And now I wanna go to wherever I find in this animation that the fist should be activated. Think about right here. So frame six, so go to frame six in your animator and then you wanna add a animation event. You're gonna give this a name and then activate fist so that's uh, a function that you call when you activate it click back on your animation and now you want to see when it should be deactivated that's probably around right around here so maybe a little further frame 10 frame 10 sounds good so let's go to frame 10 add another animation event and call that deactivate fist Cool, now you have these two functions. Now you wanna go back into your to your robot enemy, go to the AI, AI character controller. And in here you wanna call these two functions. So just call them by whatever you named them. So activate fist in my case. Now you have these two functions and this already pretty much works. So now in this function, you want to activate the collider and in this function, you want to deactivate it. Now to do that, there's a couple of ways. I like to go with the probably easiest one. So you're just going to create a new public game object variable here and call that M right fist. And then in here, in your, in your scene, you can, you can see that there is a new slot showing up for that right fist and you're just going to go ahead and drag the right fist where you added the collider to and you drag that onto your right fist slot here. Then go back to your script, take the right fist, call it here, go to get component, set that to collider and then choose collider enabled equals false, uh, true, sorry. 
and then the same thing but false on the disable function. All right, so now we have this trigger enabled. Now we also need our player to actually recognize when he gets hit. So I'm gonna do this in my player controller script. You might have a different script for this. You wanna basically use the script that controls your player. So there, we can also add a new script if you want to. Um, I already have a die function in here, so I'm just gonna use that one. So in here you want to take that unity function called on trigger enter. So it's important to know that's not a on collision enter, it's a trigger because you actually made a trigger, not a collider. And then you want to check if that collider has a tag which is called I think robot fist. Now we didn't add that tag yet, we're going to do that in a second. And if that's the case, if it's enabled, I want to die because getting punched by a robot is deadly, deadly. So basically my die function just destroys the game object, but I'm getting respawned instantly because I have another script set up, but that doesn't matter. Basically, what we want to achieve here is that you can call a function whenever you get hit by your enemy. What you do from there is totally up to you. You can apply damage to your health if you're into that or, I don't know, do a funny dance, whatever you want. So. Now we need to still add this tag, so go to your right fist. I already added it here, so you can go add a tag. You can also call it finish editor only or whatever. If you want to add a custom tag, go to add tag and then click on the plus sign here and add a new tag. And then make sure it's actually assigned to you here on the tag. So the hand has to have the tag robot fist. And now if you come back to your scene, you can actually see that when he hits you, I, in this case, respawn but um, of course you can do whatever you like with that. Now, if, as you can see, sometimes he doesn't really hit you and that's because you might wanna adjust the timing of your uh, activating and disactivating and you also wanna maybe scale your collider up a bit. So if you go to your enemy, I actually made this a lot bigger because he didn't really hit me as I was expecting it. So yeah, you might wanna play around with this and also when you go to the, to the animation, you maybe want to like drag these animation events out a little bit so the collider is actually activated a lot longer and gets you more time to actually get hit. Can't find the tutorial you are looking for? Well, just ask for it then. Just go to tutorial-request.com and check out if other people are searching for the same tutorial as you do. If you find a matching request, make sure to leave it a like so other creators always know what's in demand. And if you can't find a request that you are looking for, just create a new one. Simply click on New Request, then choose a title, topic, and description for your request, and simply click on Make Request, and you're done. It's that easy. And with your request, you help creators know what's in demand. So go over to tutorial-request.com and sign up today. It's free.